So we talked a little bit about functional groups in an earlier chapter when we introduced organic molecules, but we're going to kind of come back to that, and we'll do this with several of the functional groups as we go through the rest of the course. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit more about alcohols. At that point, we were just worried about you saying, okay, I know an alcohol has an OH group. And we, we're going to look at that and look at some more of the characteristics involved. So the kind of basic definition of an alcohol is, in fact, that it does have that OH group. And it's going to depend on where it's attached, what we kind of describe it, what kind of alcohol it is. And so this is ethanol. Um, it is an alcohol because it's an OH group, and it's an eth because it has two carbons there in the molecule. And so what we see is that when we have an alcohol, the ending of the name will be OL. Now we can further divide alcohols down by describing them as either primary, secondary, or tertiary. Notice we use these abbreviations, kind of the one degree, second degree, and third degree there um, as a way of describing them. So here's how we define something as a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. We find the hydroxyl group. So that's a hydroxyl group, the OH. I find the carbon that's attached to the hydroxyl group. And then I look at that carbon and see how many carbons are attached there. So here I have my hydroxyl group, I have the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, and I say there is one carbon attached there, so therefore I know this is called a primary alcohol. Then I can go to a secondary alcohol, and what I look for here is that I find my hydroxyl group, I find the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, and I ask how many carbons are attached to that carbon, and I see one, two, so I have a secondary alcohol. Note that I can only have one carbon ever attached to the hydroxyl group, so I can't look at that carbon to determine whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary, because there's only going to be one carbon bonded to the hydroxyl group, because oxygen only forms two bonds. One of them is taken up with a hydrogen, so it can only form one single bond to a carbon atom. So here I have two groups attached to my hydroxyl carbon, therefore this is a secondary alcohol. I'm not worried about that I have a hydrogen here, or in this case two hydrogens, because remember I know I'm going to have to have four bonds around carbon. I'm only worried about what is attached to it that's not a hydrogen. So in other words, what, how many carbon groups are attached to it. I can then go to a tertiary alcohol, and again find my hydroxyl group, look at my carbon, and look at how many carbons are attached to that hydroxyl carbon. I see three of them there, so I know that I'm dealing with a, um, a tertiary alcohol group there. So find hydroxyl, carbon attached to the hydroxyl, so the hydroxyl carbon, and see how many groups are attached to that particular carbon atom. So let's look at some examples here on how we do this. And so we've got a couple of different types of structures. We've got a Lewis structure down here, and we've got a couple of skeletal structures. Now what I'm going to do is I'm looking at this, is I'm actually going to kind of sketch in my carbon atoms here on my skeletal structure, and just to make it easier. And again, I'm not worried about hydrogens. I know there are hydrogens there. I know there are enough hydrogens to give everybody four bonds, and that's all great. I'm really only worried about the bonds to carbon right now. So what I do is I look at my hydroxyl group here. I find the carbon that's attached to the hydroxyl group, so this is my hydroxyl carbon, and then I look and see how many groups are attached to that hydroxyl carbon. And I have one, two, and three. Therefore, I have a tertiary alcohol because I have three carbons attached to that, that hydroxyl carbon. Now, it could be a very short chain. It could be a single carbon. We could also have where we had, you know, a big long chain. It doesn't change anything about it. All we're worried about is how many carbon groups are attached to that, that hydroxyl carbon. These would still be tertiary even with a longer chain of carbon atoms. Now we're going to look down here at the one on the bottom. And again, I'm going to go to my hydroxyl group. I'm going to find the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, and I'm going to see how many carbons are attached to it. And what I see is I have this one group, okay? So it has two carbons, but it's only one bond between the hydroxyl carbon and that group. So this is going to be a primary. Let me label this one here. This is That's our tertiary carbon there. 
Now I'm going to look over here. I've got my benzene ring. Remember when we looked at benzene, we talked about our aromatic compounds. We can show benzene as either having this circle, which really just means there's three alternating double bonds. This is just the faster way to write it, what we have um, here in this structure. So again, I'm going to go in, I'm going to draw in my carbon atoms. Again, not worried about my hydrogens. I'm just looking at carbon atoms. I'm going to find my hydroxyl group. I'm going to find my hydroxyl carbon. So this is my hydroxyl carbon. And I'm going to see how many carbon groups are attached to that hydroxyl carbon. And what I find is that there is one group going in this direction here. And then there is another bond here. So I have two carbons attached to my hydroxyl carbon. So this is going to be a secondary alcohol. It doesn't matter the size of the group. We're just saying how many bonds to carbon are present from that hydroxyl carbon. Now here's one for you to try. Which of the following is a secondary alcohol? And actually you can take this a little further. You can pause the video, find the secondary alcohol, but you can also label the other alcohols that are present as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And if there are any other functional groups, label what those functional groups are. So now you want to hit pause, try this problem, and then we'll come back in just a minute and review it. Okay, so hopefully pause so you can do this problem. And so now we're going to look at this and figure out what each type of alcohol, the ones that are alcohols, and for the one that's not, we're actually going to identify its functional group. So the first thing we want to look at is drawing in our carbon atoms because that makes it much easier to see the difference between these types of alcohols or other types of molecules. And again, I'm not worrying about hydrogen atoms at this point. I know they're there but they're not telling me anything about the kind of alcohol I have present. So I'm going to look at my first molecule here. I find my hydroxyl group, find my hydroxyl group, and I look at the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group. So I have this carbon, and I notice since it's attached to two other carbons, so this is actually going to be my secondary alcohol. This second molecule is not an alcohol because it doesn't have an OH group. So we know that this is going to be a different type of functional group. It has two carbon chains on either side of the oxygen. This is actually an ether molecule. And then we look at the last, the third molecule here, excuse me, the third one. We see our hydroxyl group, so we know we're dealing with an alcohol. The fact that this has a double bond in it doesn't have anything to do with whether it's a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. That would be reflected in the name, and we will not be naming molecules that look like this where we're dealing with double bonds and alcohols where we have to worry about numbering. Now, if you were given the name of a molecule, um, you should be able to kind of figure out the chunks and say, well, if I see the E and E ending, I know that it's got a double bond. And with alcohols, things get a little bit different in how we name them. So again, what I'm worried about for more complicated molecules is you identifying chunks of them, looking at pieces of the name and determining um, what type of structural features that molecule has. So in this case, I look at my hydroxyl group. I look at the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, and I have a another only one carbon attached to that, so that means I'm dealing with a primary alcohol there. I look at my last molecule here. I've got a hydroxyl group here. I look at my hydroxyl carbon, so the carbon attached to the hydroxyl group, and I see that there are three carbons attached to that hydroxyl carbon, so I'm dealing with a tertiary alcohol for that last one.